This could totally be one of those went looking for copper found gold stories, except in this case, the farmers in China were actually digging for bat droppings. Huh? Yikes! And ended up finding a piece of human skull instead of gold. Huh? Why would people be looking for dung? And more importantly, why is that skull so precious? Almost like gold. Let me break it down for you. First things first. The farmers were just looking for natural fertilizer. That's why they were rummaging in that cave. But instead of bat droppings, they hit a piece of a human skull. Ancient, heavy, and fossilized. Scientists named it Maba 1 and dated it back to 300,000 years ago. Back then, many different types of ancient humans were roaming the Earth, so no one could figure out who this skull belonged to. For decades, experts were guessing. Could it be Neanderthal or Homo erectus? Or maybe a totally new species? The skull was just a fragment, no jaw, no body, making it a real puzzle. But now, thanks to high-tech micro-CT scans, researchers have finally looked inside without damaging the fossil. What they found changes everything. Rare, tube-like structures in the skull that almost no Neanderthals had. Could this be evidence of a mysterious ancient human we never knew existed? The shape of the inside of the skull looked more like Homo erectus, a much older human species, but it didn't fully match with this one either. The skull's size and shape were more like modern humans and Neanderthals, and it had features that Homo erectus usually didn't have. For example, a shorter forehead area and a thicker bregma. That's the spot where two skull bones meet. Maba 1 also had a strange dent on the forehead, like a bruise frozen in time. This injury likely happened while the person was alive. Maybe they fell or had some condition like anemia, or even a tumor. But the person didn't get an infection from it, so it's possible they healed and lived for a while after whatever happened to them. So Maba 1 doesn't match any species we know perfectly but it has common traits and a very similar story to other mysterious fossils from all over Africa. For example, back in 1976, one famous paleontologist and her team found another human-like skull in Tanzania. The skull the scientists found had features that resemble those of Homo sapiens, or modern humans, even though it was incredibly old. Scientists believe it could be one of the earliest examples of our species ever discovered, a real treasure. That means this skull might help answer one of the biggest questions in science. When exactly Homo sapiens first appeared? The layer of Earth where the skull was found dates back to the late Pleistocene period. That's way before most textbooks used to say modern humans existed. Since its discovery, Scientists have analyzed the LH18 skull in every detail and compared it to other ancient fossils to figure out where it fits on the human family tree. They found no exact match for it, but they noticed it was related to other archaic Homo sapiens crania from Africa. On the other side of the African continent, in the rocky hills of Morocco, miners digging for barite found bones from some ancient humans and later some stone tools and even animal remains. At first, researchers thought these bones were from Neanderthals and only about 40,000 years old. But as they dug deeper, literally, into research, they saw the fossils were actually Homo sapiens and much older, maybe around 160,000 years old. But something didn't add up, as the bones looked more primitive than other known Homo sapiens fossils. Thanks to new discoveries and better dating methods from the 21st century, scientists figured out that this Moroccan site might be even more important and older than anyone could imagine. The bones had old and new traits. The face, jaw, and teeth looked a lot more like modern humans, but the shape of the skull was longer and less rounded kind of like older human species. So, this fossil could show what early Homo sapiens' brains looked like before they evolved into the brains we have today. This group of people could represent the earliest stage of our species. They were almost like us, just not quite there yet. Some scientists don't agree and think that these fossils might not be true Homo sapiens, but rather close relatives, 
probably Homo antiser. That species could be a shared ancestor of both Neanderthals and humans. One thing is clear. Early Homo sapiens didn't just come from one place, but from all over Africa. And some of them, now it's even trickier to say who exactly created the tools and cultural objects during the Middle Stone Age. And then, there is another mysterious unidentified find. The skull from Zambia's Broken Hill Ore Mine. Miners oh. found it, and some other bones, also by accident. Scientists nicknamed it Rhodesian Man. At first, they thought it was like a missing evolutionary link between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Now, thanks to new research tools, they found it's almost 299,000 years old, and its owner probably lived alongside the primitive species Homo naledi in southern Africa. All this fits in well with new research that says some parts of our DNA are way older than expected even older than the time when our human ancestors split into different populations. For a while, some experts thought the best explanation was that early humans in Africa interbred with a mystery species, like how humans mixed with Neanderthals and Denisovans in Europe and Asia. But we've never found fossils or DNA from this supposed ghost species. So instead of saying that unseen species passed us these ancient genes, Scientists used advanced models to study how human DNA changes over time. And it's possible that the earliest Homo sapiens populations in Africa weren't one big happy family after all. Between 1 million and 100,000 years ago, Earth went through intense glacial cycles, freezing periods followed by warmer ones. These shifts forced human groups to spread out when land was good and then pushed them back together when conditions got rough. Advanced analysis of the genomes of living people from all over the world – Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Americas – showed that two separate human population groups reunited about 300,000 years ago. One of them, which had gone through a rough time and nearly vanished at one point, made up around 80% of the genes in modern humans. The other group added the remaining 20%. And that 20% may have made a huge difference especially in areas like brain function and how our neurons work. Unlike Neanderthals, whose DNA make up only about 1-4% to of the genome of non-Africans today, this ancient mixing event added 10 times that amount, and it's in everyone! Scientists still need to figure out who these mystery ancestors were. From fossil evidence, it looks like Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis who lived in Africa and beyond during that time might match these ancient populations. But researchers will need more clues, both genetic and fossilized, to be sure. Some of them think that the features of one group may come from an even older ancestor species, like Homo antisor, whose fossils were found in Spain. Maybe the answer is hiding in the Khoisan people in southern Africa, who have more genetic diversity than all other humans combined. That's because they've had a long and isolated history, and their ancestors go way back to those ancient branches of early Homo sapiens. About 15% of their DNA comes from Europeans, and they also carry East African ancestry from about 2,000 years ago. Now, scientists think that descendants of both West and East Africans eventually left Africa and populated the rest of the world. Looks like these people were the product of multiple branches of Homo sapiens coming back together. It's clear from this research that we aren't a species with one clean origin. Perhaps it's time we stop talking about African ancestry as one thing. Africa is hugely diverse, and so are the roots of humanity. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.